Hi everyone, thank you all for coming and today we are going to be talking about the new Aladdin movie which is currently killing it at the box office. Hi everyone, so it's Princess Slash Melina here. I originally filmed this video like so soon after Aladdin came out but then I was really overwhelmed with work and personal stuff, hashtag mental illness forever. Um, so I did not get a chance to put this up as soon as it might seem, so I apologize for that, but I hope you will still enjoy this video. Um, my opinions have mostly stayed the same about it. If anything, I think I've gotten more adamant about the movie being hella mediocre, but um, I still hope you guys enjoy this review because I still think it kind of hits all the points. I was like, I sound mad smart on it, so I'm gonna keep it. Um, yeah, XOXO Gossip Girl. Now I did see Aladdin at a screening and I wrote a whole review of it and overall I thought that it was fine. You know, it's not visually engaging or appealing. I think Guy Ritchie was such an odd choice to direct this film. I mean, first of all, it should have been directed by someone who was, you know, um, Arab or uh, Middle Eastern at the very least. Um, and it's like, even if they were gonna pick a white dude, it's like, Baz Luhrmann didn't do all that cultural appropriation and Moulin Rouge for you to just like shit on him like this. Like, and I think that the cast is really cute. Like I think Mena Masood is so charismatic and appealing as Aladdin. He definitely is charming. The boy cannot sing, but he is overall very charming and very sweet. Uh, Naomi Scott does a really good job as Jasmine, even though she is like, we'll get to Jasmine because as the focus of this video, she's fine, even though she very much stands out not just for being like a great singer, but also as being one of the few non-Arab actresses cast in the movie. Like she's part Indian and it very much shows. She looks not out of place, but it's very clear that they didn't cast her um, correctly in that way, but she's fine. Will Smith is a delight as the genie when he's just allowed to be Will Smith the genie and not Robin Williams cosplay the genie. And I think all that is fine. To me, the biggest problems besides the songs not really working and the Jasmine thing, which we will get to in a second, is that nothing is very beautiful about this movie. For a film that is based on such a beautifully animated movie with so much color and life in it, there is no part in this film where I felt wowed by anything. The Cave of Wonders is not gold or shiny. It's kind of like a gray cave with like jewels kind of dispersed around it, like like Azales or something. And even during A Whole New World, like the, that's such a big, powerful musical number, but also animated set. And you kind of feel nothing unless you just feel nostalgia, which is what these movies are trying to do. They're trying to sell you the, oh my God, it's this movie I loved when I was a kid, but this time it's in live action. And for me, it just didn't work. It didn't work for Beauty and the Beast, which I, which, which I regret having seen, honestly, even though I didn't pay for it. I, I, when I did see it, it was just kind of like, oh, this is what we're doing. But I decided that no matter what my qualms with the movie were in terms of like it just existing to be frank, I was gonna give it a fair shot if I felt that they did a good job with my girl, Jasmine. And I have a lot of issues with how they handled writing Jasmine in this adaptation. Forgoing the fact that I think Naomi Scott is good in the role and that her singing is great, I think the characterization changes to Jasmine are kind of on track for the overall problems with these Disney live action films in terms of how they decide that they want to empower the female characters retroactively and kind of answer all the like feminist call call outs that Disney has gotten and it's like on the one hand noble attempt I can see why you'd want to do that but on the other hand it's also like but these movies are still overwhelmingly being written by men and also not really dealing with the core issues and uh Jasmine was never speechless so what the fuck is going on here guys? Now if you enjoy these movies I am not knocking you for it like these movies are not the dregs of creativity they are just really really close but when I was finally forced to watch with my best friend you know the DVD version of Hermione Granger's Beauty and the Beast I still cried because I still have like a lifetime of attachment to these characters regardless of, or not if the movie is actually good, you know? Like, I think that if any of these Disney movies are going to be successful, I will be happy that it's the one with the POC cast. Um, 
And I'm gonna celebrate that in terms of its success because I think that just like when it first came out in 1992, Aladdin was a real game changer in showing Disney that a brown cast could visually lead a movie and that people would be attached to it. Now are there problems because of the major orientalism in Aladdin? Absolutely. And I think that's one of the problems with the adaptation beyond my critique of Jasmine and like all the other minor things I have with it is that like one of the biggest issues with Aladdin is how exotified and orientalist it makes the universe and how undefined aesthetically that it always is and putting Guy Ritchie in that position did not fix anything. So this bit movie basically let me down in terms of two things. The lack of chemistry between Aladdin and Jasmine and the title issue, my kind of issues with how they chose to write Jasmine in this adaptation. I'm gonna be very brave and courageous and say that I think that Aladdin, despite being like a G movie, is like kind of sexy. Like Aladdin was like straight up a lot of people's first animated human crush, you know, non-human shout out to Max Goof holding it down for the people forever. Still love you, boo. Um, you know, he was like this kind of flirty bad boy and Jasmine, like Jasmine, like there are issues with the way she's hypersexualized in Aladdin, but in terms of just like the way she's animated and her looks, she's just so... I'm gonna let him explain it for me. Beautiful. She's got these eyes that just... and this hair. Wow. And her smile. <sighs> you know, Aladdin and Jasmine just had this very intense, you know, intimate chemistry. Like even their first kiss on the balcony in the animated uh, version, like you look at it and you're like, that's tongue in there. There's something going on in there between these two. And like even Jasmine's whole face after the kiss is kind of like, yeah, I did that, boy. I did that. Bitch, I'm a star. I got these niggas wishing. He say he hungry. This pussy the kitchen. When I was a teenager, it was kind of like one of some things that were really fun about it. As some of you guys know, I used to make, you know, Disney animated music videos. And like, I love using Jasmine because she's just got such great face expressions. Like, her face is always so like, like all the time and I love that about her. You know Jasmine was like the Barack Obama of brown girls like it didn't matter if you weren't Arab or Middle Eastern like it mattered that she wasn't white. You know Jasmine was just like she was smart, she was cool, she was sassy and she stunted on all the other white princesses okay like she was like the one. Everyone kind of like adopted Jasmine as like their brown princess for like a very long time because it was like we don't got that many options girl and I am not going as Nala so like it's gonna be that. The personality changes to Jasmine really stuck out with me from the very beginning because and let me preemptively say this it's not a case of like this ruined anything for me or that I think that only this interpretation is good. It's more to say that there was something special about the way that Jasmine has always felt and honestly having watched this movie I have felt that more strongly than ever before like I I had such a very deep visceral need to see Jasmine a certain way that like honestly shook me because I did not expect it and so one of the things that I love about the animated version is when you're introduced to Jasmine in her first big scene it's like her and Raja and they're laughing because they just like drove off Prince Ahmed because Jasmine will yell at men the entire movie she will tell men that they ain't shit from beginning to end because as we stand. She's supposed to get married. She feels very trapped in her situation. She talks about how she didn't really have any friends growing up. But she's very much like, I'm not having this. And her big ending of that scene is her releasing all the birds from this wherever you keep birds. I don't know. Cause it establishes her as someone who wants to escape the situation that she's in. Someone who's not afraid to speak up for herself. Someone who's not afraid to like, you know, stand up to her dad. This is someone who is very bold. In the live action movie we do get the uh a little shot of her as we do the Arabian Nights opening sequence but the first time we meet her properly they actually have skipped a bunch of stuff in this version instead of meeting later in the marketplace she and Aladdin actually meet during this place where one jump comes in which I have issues with for like chemistry reasons but like that's when that happens and I was going along with it. I'm like, okay, they want to just establish it sooner so that they can do a more drawn out romance. I get it. But the point in which I was like, do you remember this scene? But this is your first time in the marketplace, huh? Is it that obvious? <laughs> well, you do kind of stand out. I mean, uh, you don't seem to know how dangerous Agrabah can be. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm a fast learner. <laughs> what I think is really important to understand about Jasmine and Aladdin is that despite not having this be a law movie, all of their interactions in this early part of the marketplace setting really establish like their chemistry to each other, the way they play off each other. It tells you a lot about who Aladdin is, it tells you a lot about who Jasmine is, like her ability to like do improv and she not taking one class girl. We stay on improv queen. She just is like, oh yeah, doctor, how are you? Talk she just easily goes into Aladdin's world because it shows her ingenuity and all these things about her and her jumping and just being like, I got this. It was like a badass moment. I was like, uh. In the animated movie, she's afraid to jump. And I, I, when that scene happened, I was like, I was writing my notebook, I was like, no. 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 I, don't, I, I don't like it. And this, that scene solidifies all the things about Jasmine's writing in this movie that I don't like. I appreciate that they wanted to add her like having a friend, she has a handmaid named uh, Delia, is also the love interest for the genie. If I think back at it, I need to see the movie again, but I don't even think that their conversation passes the Bechdel test. Maybe it does. I... Okay, but they do, and her, her major added conflict is that she wants to be Sultan. And I have seen so many people praise this as giving Jasmine more to do. But the more I think about the movie version of Jasmine versus the animated version of Jasmine, I feel like they gave her like a more non-Aladdin, non-marriage based issue of like she wants to be Sultan for the sake of her own people, but as someone has pointed out, like the monarchy trying to do anything for the people is like <laughs> a joke. Um, but what they've also done is like they gave her that but then tone down everything else about her personality. And that's what I find umbrage with. Her big musical number in the movie is a song called Speechless, and she delivers it very well. But when I tell you, like, when she started to sing this song, first of all, the sequence is totally out of place in the narrative. Like, it's so redonkulous that it kind of takes you out the movie, despite how well she's singing it. But also, I could feel Disney trying to manipulate me. Like, you should feel empowered right now at this moving message of her finding her voice. And I was like, you know what, Disney? You could have got me if I had not remembered one very important thing. Jasmine was never speechless. In the entire Aladdin movie, there is plenty of moments where Jasmine speaks up for herself, dismisses people, and really holds her own. I think of the part, like even though she was not supposed to be Sultan, I remember when she goes to Jafar after he has Aladdin killed and she goes to him. At least some good will come of my being forced to marry. When I am queen, I will have the power to get rid of you. Okay, so all of that is like super compelling. I was even thinking in like this big sequence is supposed to be this whole thing because you know, Jafar has taken over and he has control of the guards because saying he's the Sultan, I guess that's, it's a weird choice that they kind of do. And in it, she kind of like convinces them all with her song, like, will you not stand for Agrabah? And I'm just like, you know, in the animated movie, Jasmine just went like, we will never bow to you and that was it, girl. Like, we didn't need to have a whole opening number. My order, finally, you will bow to me. We will never bow to you. Why am I not surprised? These kind of choices, they're not inherently bad, but I find myself questioning, like, why did you choose to take away all of Jasmine's assertiveness and sort of outgoingness to give her, like, a more... I, I was talking to one of my friend Sarah about it, and she kind of said that she's very, like, regal and, like, above it all, which I think is also... A, I don't think there's anything wrong with that characterization, but that's just not Jasmine. You know what I mean? Like, Jasmine's not, she's still regal and a badass, you know? And I just find it to be very much like Disney trying to address critiques, the feminist critiques of Disney that we've been giving them forever. And the problem is, fam, you took a character that was never silent, never speechless, made her so, so that you could empower her, instead of just having her be empowered the whole way through. You know what I mean? Like, the whole, like, she wants to be Sultan thing, you can keep that. And you can still have her, because apparently the whole thing is like an Agrabah, there's never been a Sultan in like a thousand years, you know, don't let Jasmine get no dragons, because that'll really fuck it up for her. But 
you know, it, it's just kind of like very tacked on. Like we have to address why sh the sexism, you know? And this is something that they do all the time now is like with Beauty and the Beast with wanting to make Belle like also an inventor to like prove to us that she's smart. It's like, we believe she's smart. This character has been around for over 20 years. Like we just believe that she's intelligent. You don't have to sell it to us. And Disney just keeps trying to sell these sort of like, we're gonna, retroactively fix the issues with these characters and for me I can say you know the orientalist issues I'm not Middle Eastern I'm not Asian so I don't want to speak for that but I know that there have been critiques about Jasmine being hypersexualized, which are absolutely a thousand percent true with her outfit like the girl's supposed to be 14 years old that don't make no sense you know um so there is that so the hypersexualization of Jasmine one get rid of that to make her older, make her 18, 19, you know, a normal friggin' age, not 14 going on 15. And three, give her another goal. So her being Sultan is great. That's all great. But you don't have to like make her journey harder or like get rid of things about her that make her compelling. And also I would even say like of all the princesses that need that treatment, Jasmine is not one of them. Like. I grew up, like, I was born in 1992, the same year Aladdin came out, so I've literally always had Jasmine in my life. But I also had the Aladdin TV show in which they had episodes solely devoted to Jasmine. Jasmine has gotten so much post-movie development. Like, in the show, she and Aladdin would be, be doing reconnaissance missions for Agrabah, she'd be fighting people, kicking people in the face, fighting witches. Jasmine is very well developed. Same with when they do Little Mermaid movie, Ariel, because you know what's gonna happen with Ariel. They're gonna find a way to do that whole thing. Like, she gave up her voice for a man, then they're gonna address that so on the nose, and it'll be like, girl, you can't fix it. You can't fix it. Like, that hot take is so deeply embedded to the mythos of the story, you might as well just go on with what you're doing, because you're not gonna be able to fix it. But what is important is that the Little Mermaid TV show, which I think is a superior Little Mermaid product, just saying, the Little Mermaid TV show spent a significant amount of time showing us Ariel's backstory, which was all of her adventures and stuff before the state of the show. And that's what you need. Like, sometimes the, the out material is what's worth it. And for me, I just feel like Jasmine has been such a is overall a well-rounded princess character. I think I think there was very little besides the animation and exotification of her that needed to be course corrected. And I think that they didn't make her as, you know, overly exotified. I still think they got all the costumes for her so off. Like I was looking at some like you know, Middle Eastern outfits, and I just feel like they still kind of missed the mark with her for some of it. But you know, I, I think that Jasmine was really solid as a Disney princess character. I think that she was autonomous, she was smart, she was daring, she was loving, she was kind, she was compassionate. I love the idea of her being all that stuff and wanting to be Sultan as well. But again, why take an empowered brown princess and make her speechless? Why make that the crux of her story? Like you wouldn't do that to Belle. You know, you wouldn't do that to, to, to all these other spunky princesses. Like, their spunk is part of their aesthetic. Why take that away from Jasmine? And I especially feel that way because Disney movies have had this really poor thing of, like, making their non-white settings extra sexist in comparison to their white settings because, you know, the whole, like, princesses movies have to end with marriage and arrange marriage thing. Like, that really, the only white princess before Merida that ever had to deal with like a range marriage storyline was Aurora in Sleeping Beauty. It wasn't like the society is terrible. It's more like what a tragic comedy of error. She's met the man of her dreams but now she has to marry a prince. Oh wait it's the same person Shakespeare. You know whereas like in you know Aladdin has it very much said like the law says you must be married to a prince by your 15th birthday and it's like what law. And I say this as someone, like, the, the, the course correcting is very annoying, and I say this as someone, like, when I tell you this, I love Disney feminism critique. I love Disney hot takes. Like, arguing about Disney hot takes is literally my kink. I'm so into it. I'm I'm aroused right now. I'm not. I swear. I'm sorry. That was weird. The, the way Disney can course correct the bad things that they've done is by making better Disney princess movies, which they've done. They gave us Moana. They gave us Moana. 
I can ask for nothing more. I mean, they're about to give us Frozen 2. I resent it. But they're, they gave us Moana, and I will hold on to that so deeply because I Am Moana is one of the most perfect songs ever put into a Disney movie and I thank you for that. And also when you look at all these reboots with female protagonists with the exception of Maleficent, the best one, I'll fight y'all about that at another point, um, they're all written by men. So like how are you gonna fix your, your feminist issues if you don't have any women involved in the production of the crafting these stories? All they ever do is make guys who nag or do like worse things. Like Aladdin like steals from Jasmine in this one. It's supposed to be like a whole cute thing of like, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna take it and bring it back to you. And I'm just kinda like, just stop taking your stuff, man. Stop taking your stuff. And really when it comes down to it, like a feminist movie is supposed to be a movie about the socio-political issues dealing with women. And I can get why they would think that making Jasmine want to be Sultan hints at that. The problem is that we don't have enough time spent on that. We don't even really understand like what it would mean for Jasmine to be Sultan considering her father don't do nothing. So it's like she's just gonna be wealthy and her people are gonna be poor but they'll be poor with a nice ruler. So like you know. In my mind there are only three Disney princess movies that can be considered feminist in my mind that are like talking about that and that'd be Mulan because it deals with specifically about feminine gender stuff in the movie. Uh, Prison of the Frog which deals with like the economic situation of what it means to be a black woman business owner and Brave. That's it. Even Moana doesn't really deal with that because there's actually no gender issues in Moana which is partly why it's perfect. No one ever brings up that she's gonna be a female chief she just is and I'm just kind of like how amazing and I mean princess movies because if we're talking about like the non-princess stuff then we get a lot more. Because also, I will say this, the emphasis on princesses in our feminist discourse about Disney is a problem. Like, Esmeralda is more feminist than anyone else. So, we have to critique The Hunchback of Notre Dame is what I'm trying to say. The, the only movie that, that the proletariats can really side with. I think I will say, I didn't expect to be so emotional about the changes to Jasmine. But I just realized that like Jasmine's a very important character to me. Like my favorite Disney princess may be Belle, but like, you know, Jasmine was one of the first princesses that I saw be non-white and beautiful. You know, her, Pocahontas, Esmeralda, Kida, Audrey, those women all before Tiana appeared and you know, Lilo and Nani, my Hawaiian queens, you know, uh, they all mattered to me because it was seeing women of color in positions of beauty and positions of love and their stories being highlighted. While it was not perfect, especially in the case of Pocahontas and ja and Aladdin, it also felt good to see it on a certain hand because we were so used to seeing everyone else have those stories and now we got to have it as well. And that felt good as a kid. And I think now as an adult, while I can enjoy the nostalgia of it and I, and I definitely understand why people are going to see Aladdin and want to enjoy it and that's totally fine. But for me, I think if we're going to try and evolve past it, what needs to be done is stop making these live act action adaptations. Because even the best of them are not really that great. And I like Maleficent, but like, we don't need a Maleficent too. I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it. But we don't need it. And I remember I was, there was a part, besides Speechless, when A Whole New World was playing, I was like jamming along with it. Like when Prince Ali came up, I was doing all the in-between parts that they cut out like, <laughs> it's like, don't they look lovely June? Fabulous hair, I love the feathers. I was doing all of that in the theater because I was just like, you know, it's my childhood. So I get it, I get the draw, I get why people will see it and I get why people will enjoy it. There is stuff to be enjoyed here. It doesn't mean that it necessarily deserves all the acclaim but like at least it's the brown people movie. I just hope that moving forward because we're already getting Mulan, we're already gonna get The Lion King, we're probably gonna get The Little Mermaid soon. If we're gonna get The Little Mermaid guys I'm telling you right now you will never be able to fix The Little Mermaid so just go with it. Get us a girl with a good, like if Ariel's hair ain't set, you might as well not make that movie y'all. Perfection, like if Beyonce would not wear the wig, throw it away. That's just a hard fact. If Rihanna would not wear the wig, throw it out because Ariel without her hair is nothing. But anyway, for those of you who did see Aladdin because it made a billion dollars pretty much, so I know a lot of people have seen it. What did you think of Aladdin? Did you like the changes with Jasmine? How did it make you feel? And like if they were gonna reboot, a live action Disney movie, what do you want to see? And all I have to say is that they better not 
ever in this lifetime touch a goofy movie. I think Atlantis, The Lost Empire, that's what they should make into a live action movie. Like, and like, it, it, it was a flop. It would be so good today because it has a cult following. You can make your money back, Disney. That's what you should do. What I am also doing is that I will be linking down below two reviews of the movie by Middle Eastern and Arab uh, reviewers because I think it's just very important that, you know, you, we are listening to the opinions of the people who are going to be represented by this movie, especially when it comes to Orientalism. Like, I'm not fully qualified, even though I've read, uh, you know, Saeed and other writers about it. I know, besides the fact that, like, the, the basics that I didn't, I don't have the qualifications to cover it. So I put links to those people down below. Definitely check them out. And yeah. Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Abab, Unhand him by order of the princess. Princess Jasmine. The princess? What are you doing outside the palace? And with this street rat? That's not your concern. Do as I command. Release him. Oh, I would, princess. Except my orders come from Jafar. You'll have to take it up with him. Believe me, I will. I will win your daughter. How dare you? All of you, standing around deciding my future? I am not a prize to be won. Hmm. I'm rich too, you know. Yeah. The daughter of a sultan. I know. A fine prize for any prince to marry. Uh, right. Right. A, a prince like me. Why? Why? Right. A prince like you. And every other stuffed shirt hey, swaggering wait. peacock I've met. Maybe. Maybe. Just what? go jump off a balcony. What?